All right, so here we are in Richmond, Virginia with Zach. Hello. World famous Zach. <laughs> and he is sitting in the Archimoto, and this is called the FUV. I think it's translated as Fun Utility Vehicle. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself in case people don't know anything about you. What brought you into the CV space? Yeah, so uh, about three years ago now, I bought a Chevy Spark EV to uh, really for my wife to use for food delivery around town. It's a great city car. And uh, she didn't really like the low range. I didn't care. I love it. So I kind of stole it from her. Mm -hmm. And uh, that started the EV journey. I realized that uh, there were still a lot of questions I had that I didn't have answers to. So I created EV Resource uh, initially to be just a web page where people could go and get the answers they needed or wanted uh, and maybe answers to questions they didn't even know to ask. Well, that progressed into a magazine and a podcast and a YouTube channel. Uh, and so fast forwarding all the way to uh, now, We've got a Model 3 in addition to the Spark that we own, and it kind of brought me to this. Uh, the Arkimoto, they had one of these at the DC Auto Show, which anybody that went to the DC Auto Show, it was hard to miss. And so I actually arranged with the company, uh, I made contact that day, but I arranged with the company to uh, have this one on loan. Um, initially, I was only asking for a day, but they offered a week. And um, it's turned into a little bit more than that. And I am not complaining because this is a fun utility vehicle. It lives up to its name and then some. I have driven a ton of different kinds of cars, fast cars, 500 horsepower, gas powered cars. I've driven so many different kinds of EVs. I have never in my life had more fun driving or riding a vehicle than what I'm sitting in right now. It is unbelievable 400 miles later you have taken it on the track i have you have been in the cold it's cold you know it's chilly right it's now chilly. But it's, and you've been in the rain and so tell me your first thoughts about this vehicle yeah so first thoughts were it's very much like a motorcycle in terms of the experience of riding uh in a car you're detached from your environment you've got glass and steel and everything around you you don't experience the world as you're traveling through it. With a motorcycle, of course, you have none of that. You're very much aware of all the sights and sounds and smells of everything around you. You get that here with the fun utility vehicle. You can hear the cars around you. You can smell everything. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Trust me, this week I learned that. So initial impression is it's the best of what a motorcycle can bring. But it's also a little bit better than that because you've got the two wheels up front, right. so it's stable. You don't have to lean into corners the way you would on a motorcycle. Right. It's much easier to ride for anybody. You know, you don't have to go and take a test to learn how to ride this the way you typically would need maybe a couple hours with a traditional motorcycle. Uh, as the week has gone on, of course, my my thoughts about the FUV have kind of broadened and deepened a little bit and it is a vehicle that i would drive year round really absolutely now the one thing i haven't experienced is snow of course um but i would have no issue driving this year round this week i have ridden in freezing temperatures like i think one morning it was 30 degrees okay i just bundled up i wore layers i'm wearing layers right now you know i've got two different jackets on but that's perfectly fine it's when you're riding, the wind is going around you. So as long as you're moving, you don't really get a whole lot of wind. Uh, it's got heated seats and heated handlebar grips, so it actually does keep you fairly comfortable. You can turn those on. It takes a minute or two for the uh, resistance heater to build up heat. But it's it's one of those things where it they've provided for that. You know, this is built in Oregon the Pacific Northwest, it gets cold there. It gets rainy there. That is the environment that they created this vehicle to withstand and, and really thrive in. And I think it does very well, even in the rain. I have ridden in the rain and uh, 
I've never had that much fun riding in the rain. Well, how wet <laughs> did you get? Because there's no doors. I know this comes with doors. It does wet... have how... optional, like, uh, West Coast-style half doors that you can get. Okay. And uh, the company th this past week had a presentation, so I know they're working on full doors as an option in the future as well. So how wet did you get when it rained? Uh, I didn't. Okay. Um, I, I really, I mean, maybe, like, a slight misting, but because I was wearing layers, like, I didn't feel it at all. Right, right. Okay, uh, so let's talk quickly two or three things one uh charging i see the charging yep. port right here it's a standard j1772 okay. so level one or level two charge what's the most that you can get how many miles can you get <laughs> mileage is interesting because it's rated at 102 miles okay. according to the epa city test cycle right. so if you're driving around town you can get fairly decent now i haven't gotten anywhere close to that this week because it has been colder mm -hmm. um i tend to enjoy the throttle so uh you know i'm definitely burning through uh the battery a lot quicker than probably somebody that just wants to go easy on it so from zero i think you wrote on one of your posts it takes a long time to charge though right yeah because it doesn't fast charge right. so it, on level two uh, it takes about four hours, sometimes a little bit more, to charge fully. Mm -hmm. This is not a vehicle meant for road trips. Right. You know, this is for around town. So I've plugged it in at night on 110 even. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like any EV, I wake up and it's got a full charge and I'm ready to go. Right. Now, obviously no storage. So It has storage. I'm going to correct oh, you on that. Okay. Here. So, all right. So I'm glad you told me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I, I did a grocery shopping test. Okay. Because... I wanted to see, hey, what can you do? This compartment back here oh, okay. is so much bigger than it looks from the outside. So you can get all the way to here. I was able to fit six gallons of water and four shopping bags full of stuff in the back of this. Wow. In addition, I bought a hamper while I was at Walmart, yeah. filled that up. I strapped that into the back seat. So I got an entire conveyor belt worth of groceries and drove it home with this. That's good. That's that's really good. So that's impressive. I didn't think so. You know, <laughs> I saw this and I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's kind of tiny. But plenty. It, but it is absolutely plenty okay. of storage. It's, it's great. It's Spartan, pretty much, right? We started to look on the inside and then we backed out. So we yeah. have the. I mean, you don't here. have much. These are Bluetooth speakers, okay. so you can hook up your phone and listen to music. Uh, it doesn't have uh, air conditioning or <laughs> that's heat obvious. per se. <laughs> that's uh, well, obvious obvious but they are offering that as an option in the future they're working on developing that so you must have to have doors to capture the heat that's i would imagine that once yes. it's fully enclosed air yeah. conditioning and heat are yeah. going to be right. be something but like currently like if you look down here okay the only buttons that are used are the windshield wiper the white uh, washing front and rear heated seats mm -hmm. window uh, windshield defroster mm -hmm. or defogger handlebar grips and parking they're going to eventually expand this to have AC, traction control, power steering, um, and I don't remember what the other two are. <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> now, one last question before we take a spin in this. You said that you actually talked to the people at the DC Auto Show. Yes, briefly. And, and they entrusted you to take care of this vehicle. They did. <laughs> and I told them everything I was planning on doing, including taking it to the track, and they still said yes. <laughs> so did they tow the car to your house? Nope. Nope. I uh, actually, my wife and I, we took our Model 3 up to Alexandria. Right. And I took uh, a little bit more than 100 miles from Alexandria all the way back here to Richmond. Oh, so they met you. So it wasn't in D.C. per se. For those who don't know what we're trying to talk about. You wasn't really physically in D.C. when you picked up the car. They had it in Alexandria. Yeah. And I this, I believe, is um, one of the company executives, their like personal vehicle that they're using. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I drove it down from Northern Virginia all the way down to uh, Richmond here. and uh, Pretty much on back road, not interstate. Uh, so I took Route 1. Okay, that's, um, that's kind I, now, of a major road. I did road go place. on the interstate at one point because... The company says it has a top speed of 75, so I wanted to go and test that and, and just verify, right. you know, trust but verify. <laughs> um, how, how afraid were you? Not at all. Not at all? Uh, in fact, I, I uh, topped this out on the way over here this morning. It's okay. it's incredibly stable at that speed. In fact, I wish it could go over 100. Um, the you, only thing that I myself want is more power and a higher 
speed. Right. I want to go fast and I want to go quick. So I, I bet you got a lot of stairs. I mean, I'm pretty sure. All the time. Everywhere, the people stop at stoplights and they're asking, what is that? Right. Or, you know, asking the questions, how far does it go and all of that. Right. Right. I can't imagine a better vehicle for just running around town and getting you to where you need to be, commuting back and forth to work, doing a little bit of grocery shopping. Right. This has done it all. So I think base price on this is about seventeen thousand. Seventeen nine. Seventeen nine. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And right now they're available on the West Coast in Florida. So right. if you're outside right. of that. Uh, my understanding is you really can't get one right now. So what's the plans for them to come like to Virginia or? So I don't Coast? know official plans or timelines. That's one of the things I plan on asking them, um, you know, after the week's done with a follow up just to get a little bit more information. So, but let's um, just take a spin. I'm going to sit in the back seat. Sure. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm precious <laughs> cargo. <laughs> if you want to, while I'm strapping in, uh, I can show you. Okay. So it is two seat belts because uh, if you only have one, that's fine for going this way. <laughs> but if you go around a corner, you're going to lean out the door. Making this chime noise and it's telling Zach that I need to buckle in the back all the way. So if I do not buckle myself, will it, can you take off? I can. You cannot take um, off? You cannot drive if the driver is not buckled. Okay. But you can if the passenger is not buckled. Okay. So the vehicle is on. It is. Uh, that's kind of crazy because again, electric vehicles have no motor, so you don't get a sense of anything being on. So he is going to uh, take off. Let me get one of my gloves on, okay? So All right, Zach. I'm gonna go out here, uh, actually onto Staples Mill. We'll just go down to the traffic Ooh. light, turn right, and come back. Ooh. That way we can get a little bit more of the parking lot speed out of it. Okay, here we go. Oh man, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say you, you gotta wear layers. I have gloves that I could put on. Uh, I imagine the experience in the back seat is different because of wind. Yeah. You might get more of the wind back there oh, than yeah. I get up here. Yeah. And you screwed if something flies out of your Arkhamoto. <laughs> yeah, you drop that phone. Yeah, no. You're you gotta go back and get it. Or drop a ball of heaven for being. Every vehicle I ever touch, I'm like, all right, I would change this, that, or whatever to make it kind of suitable for me. Right. Um, it's, 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 honestly, as close to perfect as any any vehicle I've ever experienced. Well, I kind of see why they want to start off in Florida and California. Yeah, the, the warm places. Yeah, the warm places. <laughs> But at seventeen thousand nine hundred bucks, I mean, you know, it could be a great uh, car or vehicle. Yeah, this will definitely be something that maximizes your smiles per hour. Right. 